Today, we're very excited to have Joe Colby with us again. Uh, Joe and Lauren were with us a few weeks ago and presented really neat concepts on marketing. Uh, we've got Joe back again. He's not been with uh, Team Elevate for a long, long time, but in the short time he's been with us, he has made a big difference together with Lauren. And uh, we're excited to see what he's got to show us this morning. Joe, how are you? Doing well, Ryan. Can you hear me well? Uh, it's a little bit low, but yeah, I can hear you. Hey, is this better? That's better. All right, if I get too quiet, just make sure that you yell out to me or something so that I make sure that I'm clear for everybody. But yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for getting us pumped up and ready every morning. You betcha. My pleasure. If you could, can you share, let's see, share my screen so that we can get a PowerPoint going real quick? Yeah, you should have the controls there any moment. It shows that you've got them on my okay. side. Right. Okay, you're seeing this then? Are you seeing the marketing communicating correctly? I'm... Yes, we can see that. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much, guys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. My training is this morning is focused towards those who are actively doing work already but aren't necessarily seeing the results that they want. So the first step always is make sure you're doing something. We have a ton of different marketing methods. And then if it's still not just clicking for you, if you're not running the way that you want it to, uh, pay attention. It's going to focus on the communication methods, the marketing methods that we use. A little while to figure out. But there's basically three components to marketing. When you're talking to, I just got to notice here that my internet may not be working super great. You guys hearing me good? I can hear you better now, Joe. Uh, sometimes it's been a little pixelated. It was for me this morning as well. Okay. See if I can make an adjustment here quick, see if we can avoid that. But Okay. So with, with marketing, there's basically three components that have to exist with all marketing. There's the sender, the person who creates the message and sends it out, broadcasts it out. There is what is the actual message and delivery method. And then there's the receiver, the person that's intended for the message. And then along with those three, there's one that's going to help that whole process take place a lot better, and it's rapport and alignment. If you can have rapport and be aligned with your prospect, you're going to be able to communicate with them much more effectively in a way that's a lot more powerful to do them. So in the beginning, I know that we worried a lot about like if the video mode of this with the PowerPoint, I'll make sure that I, I read through or make sure that you understand everything that I've got on here. But if you can see it, I think that's great. We learn both visually and audio and through audio. So I tried to include both of those. So the cool thing with, with our business is that everything works and nothing doesn't. We've heard that a lot of times, but you can create a marketing campaign and order prioritize any three of those things. It can be that the message is the most important, or it can be that the sender is the most important, or it can be that the receiver is the most important. And I thought I'd just go through some other examples that we know pretty well and show you how that's true. So I was thinking about like Nike and their message of just do it. Now a few things about that message, there's a lot more to the message than just those three words. It portrays a lot more information, but they, they boiled it down to a simple concept that means a lot to a lot of people. And so their message is very important, but the receiver of that message is also super important. If they did all of their marketing towards just body lifters, bodybuilders, if it was just dudes who are ripped on TV, I probably wouldn't buy their stuff. Like I'm a skinny little boy. <laughs> I wanna be like that, but I, if that was all that they showed me, it would be too far of a gap for me to think that I can do that easily as well. My wife definitely wouldn't buy it if it was just big grip 
dudes that wore Nike. And so they have any demographics that they show in their message or that they highlight. And so a lot of it, the sender, I have my story and I need to make sure that I'm sharing that with other people. But then I also know tons of other people's stories. If my message doesn't align with them the best, we have a lot of other resources to show other people's story, Ron Heyer's story, Christian Sadler, um, brand new people that have just gotten started. Wanda is not, hasn't been in too long and has been quite successful. We, and we know these stories, or we should from being there Thursday and talking with people, as well as we have recorded places with video and, and things there to be able to access and, and learn people's stories. Now, me as the sender, there's a few things that I can do to build up my credibility, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But there's also the receiver on this, and it's there's a bunch of different ways to market. You can do the broadcast to everybody and hope that you hit the right people. And that, that takes place. That's very effective. We've seen in times past that people have used signs and that's been very effective. We've been asked lately not to use signs here in, in Utah, at least currently with some things that are going on. And so there, there's other methods. So there's drop cards. There's some people have talked about maybe doing a billboard. I don't know that I would recommend going, going with that route, but again, it, that, just doesn't align with my message with me being the sender it may work for other people going back to that to that just do it if you think about the sender if you think about nike they've done a lot to create a, a brand image or a when you think of nike you think of something very clearly like we know what nike is and what it represents at least to us and as they have that clear message they have very specific target markets they've selected and said, we're going to look at and target female runners by using the story of female runners or of athletes or of, they're going to target those of us who are adventurous by using people who climb Mount Everest or different stories that way. So with the message and delivery, making sure that it's clear, um, I've crafted a great message for you guys today. Um, it, it, Awesome. The content's all there. It's something that everything that everyone should appreciate. But I expect a lot of good feedback from it. And here goes. For those of you who don't have the, the visual side of the phone going or the, the broadcast going, what's on the screen is four columns of numbers: 01001000 and then a space. 01100001 space. And it, and it continues. There's four columns, about four rows of text each, it's binary code. Um, it, it honestly, it's a great message. Now the delivery of the message isn't super great. If we put it into your computer and ran the right programs, it would be very clear what it says. But in me putting together this message, I didn't think very well about the sender. Like, does this represent Jonathan Colby, Joe Colby, as you guys know me? Do those numbers align and give you an idea of who I am or does it come across as a cold message of some computer somewhere spit out some numbers on accident and I don't really know what it's trying to say and I, I don't really care about it, right? So on the receiver side, if you were a computer or if you were Baymax that we got the picture of up there, it's a message that would completely make sense to you. But in this case, I kind of, I feel like I've missed the mark. There may be somebody in the group who knows, uh, binary code enough that they can tell me what that means. But for the most part, I'm going to have missed the message. My target market isn't going to understand a message delivered in this way. It's super simple, but it doesn't have that rapport. I'm not meeting them on their level and explaining things in a way that makes sense to them. So what in the heck does this mean? These numbers and stuff that I have up here, it, it translates out to happy holidays. Great message, great time of the year to push it out, but not a way that anybody really is going to understand or benefit from it. So with our message, I, I feel like a lot of the time for myself, I'll start talking to people, and if I don't know where they're at, then even though the content of what I'm telling them is great, 
I'm not delivering it to them in a way that's beneficial or helpful for them. So I've got another picture here on, on this next slide. It says, meet people where they are, not where you would like them to be. We definitely want to get them to the place where we want them to be. But when we meet them, when we first start our message with them, we need to figure out where they're at so that our message aligns very well with them. And the key to this part is questions. If you ask the right questions and are willing to wait until they answer them, you'll know everything you need to know about them. You'll be able to position your message and explain it to them in a way that makes a ton of sense to them. Now, a lot of that is going to be finding out like what is their financial literacy level? Are they just brand new? And you use terms like a repsy or um, like the ARV comps. Are those those terms going to go over their over their head? They're familiar to you, but are they going to go over their head, or do they make sense to them? And it may be that if you're if you're dealing with real estate agents, I know that a lot of people like will specifically target and have meetings with them. You need to come across at their level, and you need to use that vocabulary. If you tried to dumb it down per se, or to use general everyday language with a mortgage broker, with a real estate agent, with another investor, you're not meeting them on their level. But if you're showing it to a family member who works as an engineer or does some other work activity, works in healthcare or whatever, when you show them the information, you're not going to use any of that specific language. Um, you're going to relate it to things that they do. If you know that they're a nurse, you're going to figure out and say, this concept is similar to when you do this at your job or when you do this in your work or this area of your life. And then one of the other things with meeting people where they are, but helping them get to where you want them to be, not just trying to meet them right where you want them to be, is you can target different, different groups if you want to only work with people who are financially literate already, you definitely can target them. I know that there's people that are working specifically with doctors or dentists or people who make a lot of money, but they'll go and run basically a one-on-one -on -one, um, cash recovery party with them in their home and show them ways to, to deduct kid expenses or to do different things. And they, they figure out what is the most important thing to them and they show them that one thing while building intrigue and in something else. I'll jump into that with this next one. So the next concept I have here on this slide with crafting your message is you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step. I think a lot of the time we, I know that I have in the past, I've struggled with, I invite somebody to come down and I teach them about what they're going to see. And it's, it's like, if I invited somebody to come for Thanksgiving dinner, they know there's going to be a lot of food. They know that there's going to be a stomach ache after because it tastes so good and we just can't stop ourselves from eating. Like their head's going to be twirling because they've learned new concepts, new ideas. I know that they, they kind of expect that in a lot of cases, but if they show up and I tell them, if, if I skip that, that one first step and I try to go all the way to the end, and I say, hey, all of this food has to be eaten. There's only the two of us sitting here. You're going to be sick. Like, there's there's a lot to digest. I feel like Renatus is, is a lot that way. For most people, there's too much information for them to use all of it out of the gate. Some people will take it and run and use everything. But we really need to focus on what is the one first step that they need and that benefits them most. Deliver it to them and then invite them to come and sit down and as they want a piece of turkey or a roll or something else that we offer, credit management, other tools, then we introduce them to them or we pass the plate to them so that they can do it. And, and eventually we'll, we'll get their account set up. They'll have their own access. They can reach out and grab whatever they want and run with it. But it all starts with that first one step. So meet them where they are, take them one step. And I, I, I promise you guys, like one thing that we have is enough. Don't end with it. Don't satisfy all of the intrigue before you've created intrigue into one other thing. But start with them where they are and go through it. The last thing with this is less is more. So if you guys who can't see it, I've got a picture of a shark on the screen with just the dorsal fin uh, poking out of the water. And then you can see the shark body underneath. 
and it it's got up by the dorsal fin it says less less and then with the rest of the shark it says is more now i think this is a great example because again having something so simple and small given to them in a way that makes it so that they know that there is this whole shark underneath the water you know enough that like you're making decisions at that point if you're in the ocean you see the dorsal fin coming towards you that is enough for you to make a decision you don't need to see the whole shark you just see one thing that you know has some form of value to you and it you know like you know what action steps you can and, and probably need to take same thing with this show them enough of what they want and need to help them get started and they know and will very quickly be exposed to the fact that there is a lot more to Renatus than they first saw but that it was valuable enough for them to begin Another example with this real quick, I've been doing a lot of self-help, self-development. Um, and one of the books I was listening to on Audible as I was driving said a line that I really like. It, it was somebody talking and he said, the Bible doesn't say what it means. It means much more than it says. And I think a lot of us have had an experience, whether it was with the Bible or something else that is very similar to that of, how many of you have read something that it was it was a line on a piece of paper really like that was all that it was it was a line on a piece of paper but what it said to you is much more than that you started crying or there was some small thing that caused you to fear it was something that was very small but it caused much more than what actually was presented to you Another example is you read one line and then reading your book and then you realize my mind is a mile away exploring some other concept. Like I'm not on the next line in the book. My mind, is, my mind is taking this idea and we ran with it so far. There was so much in that one line or that one concept that my mind has taken and is going further with it than what I actually read. The author did that well. They know, and they, a lot of them have studied how to package a lot of information into as few words or into a very small concept as possible. The same thing, the more effective that we get in doing that and making our, our message short, efficient, to the point, and where it just hits home with those guys, and then their mind takes it and says, man, if I can do one flip, I can do 80. If I can do 80, I don't ever have to work my job again. <clears throat> if I can do one rental without my own credit or, or funds out of my pocket, I can do a thousand of them. If, if a guy named at 23 out of Chicago can be buying multi-family units, become a millionaire by buying them and having equity and stuff in them, and he's getting so much money from the rentals, the clock brothers, if they can do that at 23 and I'm 40, like, I can do that. You know, it's less content delivered to them in a way that makes sense to them and makes their mind run a mile is going to be a lot more beneficial for us. So for, for message, um, go through and craft out that message. Make it the way that you want it to be. See if there's not a simpler way to say it, a more powerful shorter more concise way of presenting that same information and what i found particularly to myself is that questions are key to that if you ask a question to somebody psychologically we've been trained to answer the question if you ask a question that shows them some information but is only the tip of an iceberg of, of what is in that question their mind it's going to stay in their mind until they have answered that question. And so it, it opens the door for them to run with an idea and have a lot of, a lot more value be created than the words that you actually said. So the next part is 
the sender, if you're crafting the message and you're sending it out, people understand that these messages are coming from somewhere, whether it's the KSL ad, whether it's the in-person face-to-face -face conversation or the phone call or the text message or whatever it is, they understand that this message is associated with somebody. I said, spend a little bit of time getting familiar with yourself and um, develop yourself a bit, become a product of the product. We've heard that all the time, but then specifically, I found that it, it helps to work on becoming trustworthy. A lot of the time in order for us to best reach somebody, we need to know the most about that, that receiver. We need to know what their dreams and those things are. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but in order for somebody to open up and share that with you, you need to develop a personality that you come across as trustworthy. People want to share that information with you and that you'll be able to, either you yourself or your network will be able to help them get what they're desiring. And strive to become a leader. People want to follow somebody if you can be the leader that they follow, they're going to be more attracted to you. Be a teacher and a mentor. A lot of the time, looking back at my teachers, like I realized they were extremely patient with me. They taught me the same concept the whole time through all of our school systems, to the point that I was like bored out of my mind that I learned the same things over and over and over again. But be patient with teaching people those new things. Realize that it's going to be a bit of a process for you to learn and implement everything and then for you to help other people learn and implement that as well. Now, a, a great teacher or a good teacher can help you learn the information. A great teacher, in my opinion, can help you learn how to do it for yourself so that they're not reliant on you and dependent on you all the time that they can get started with you and then they very quickly learn and, and are able to run with it and do it themselves um, be an inspirer we a lot of the time what we sell is not just a bundle of classes it's the dream like it's fulfilling your goals fulfilling your ambitions fulfilling yourself making yourself feel fulfilled and if you can help inspire people to that level you're going to be a lot more successful. I'll, I'll go into some further stories with that. But then the last thing that I wanted to talk about was be a friend. <clears throat> it's easier to trust a friend and, and a good friend than it is to trust a stranger. Um, I think it's interesting that psychologically we're a stranger to people or they're a stranger to us until about the second, third time that we've talked to them. That honestly can be in the same conversation as soon as you've talked about three points or so with somebody, you've created those commonalities between you. You no longer are a stranger, but you start being a friend. Focus on learning three things about each person that you meet. Connect with them so that you are no longer just this guy that does real estate or this gal that does real estate, but that you're their friend that does real estate and marketing and business and um, all these aspects that we include. The next portion is is the receiver, focusing on them. If, if we've got the message, the sender and the receiver, we need to make sure that we're hitting the mark when we send out this message. Now, how much do you know about your, your prospects? Um, I've been blessed and, and been able to experience hanging out with some of our, our leaders, especially here in the Utah market, and it's fun for me that a lot of them have mentioned this, but indirectly. Um, I've talked to quite a few of them and a lot, and most of them have said when their business took off was when they knew the most about the people on their team and or their friends and family. As that information increased, they were able to see the problems and the solutions that people were having and they were able to help them out the most. If you have a team of 10 people or 200 people or whatever it is and you meet on a weekly basis and you're able to see or on some scheduled basis and you're able to know when all of those people come in, what problems they have, who their family relationships are, the, the different things that a friend would know about these people. But then you also come in with business solutions, financial solutions, 
help that way. When you meet with them, and when you sit down and do those mastermind groups, you're able to help them much more. It's the same thing with our prospects. The more that we can get to know about them, the more we'll be able to help them. So again, how, how financially literate are they? What vocabulary do I need to use to speak to them in a way that's clear? Do they have experience with real estate or not? Is it brand new concept or is it something that they're very, very familiar with? Another one that I always try to focus on with our, our people is why real estate? Of all of the different businesses or tools or vehicles they could use to make a lot of money, why real estate? For some, it's the passive. For some, it's the massive. For some, it's security of if the world turns upside down I still own physical assets so even if I had to strip them down and burn for firewood like they have some value to me regardless of what takes place and then not only why did they choose real estate but what will real estate do for them which doors is it going to open what pathway are they trying to get to that real estate is going to be the vehicle for them and a lot of that comes back into You've got your why real estate, but then it comes back into discovering what their true why is and what are they hoping to accomplish with it. A clear example, and the reason that I've got the hot air balloons here on the on the screen is my wife went and met with um, a younger a younger lady a little bit ago uh, that we had met through our our church group that she had gone to a a, a guru event and there. Her and her mom were about to spend $40,000 to go and do this real estate stuff. And we had a quick conversation with them. My wife went to lunch afterwards with them a little bit more. But in about half an hour's time frame, switched them from they were going to do real estate something, but switched them from instead of going and spending $40,000 and getting a year's worth of three or four classes, come and get lifetime access to everything for half the price. And they're like, yeah, well, that's not nice, but I still like these guys. Like, what do we do about, I feel like I have some rapport, some relationship with those other guys. I don't want to let them down. And it wasn't until that conversation, and this is something that we do, but it wasn't until that conversation got to the point of dreams that was when they said, yeah, we're going to come and do it with you. Because we had decided that as part of our marketing, we were going to have an incentive in place for people where when they joined onto our team, they were going to fulfill one of their dreams within the first few months of joining with us. And so Lauren started talking about like, we just went skydiving. We've done, I mean, all these different activities. One of them that we're wanting to do still is hot air balloon riding. And she went through and, and laid out some examples of people's bucket list ideas and said these are activities that we want to have part of our everyday activities and that we want to help you be able to do whenever you want to as well when you guys join and start doing the education and stuff with us we would love to help you get out of your comfort zone get get started with this have an awesome experience and go hot air balloon riding for example and uh, we met she met with them again a couple days later and it was funny she she came and pulled out the bucket list and showed it to, to my wife, Lauren, and said, I don't know how you knew the things that we wanted, or the things that I wanted, but at the top of her bucket list, she wanted to take her mother on a hot air balloon ride. And so it really is these dreams. Everybody has a dream or multiple dreams that they want to do. And as soon as you can show them how it's going to fulfill their dreams, it's a trusted process that works. They can do it and lots of people are doing it. It becomes much easier for them to say, yeah, I can do this too. So we've gone through the sender, the message and the receiver. I hope that that's been clear of the better that you can get honed in on those three and that you can quickly adjust and know for this receiver, this is the message that I need to deliver. For this receiver, this is the way I need to talk during my message, this is what needs to be delivered. For this receiver, maybe I'm not the best person to share my story with them, but who can I get on a three-way call? Or who can I introduce them to Thursday at an Epic that can share their story that is going to speak more to them? I, I've done that with our team members. There was a guy that came down that is super financially literate. He wants to 
run some finance stuff that I feel like I probably, having come from the financial background that I did, know more about what he's trying to do than most of the people in our group. And I said, hey, let me talk to him. I will build that report quicker and he'll trust me and my background very quickly and I'll still edify you and share that power and edification back to you. But let me talk to him because we speak on the same page. Like we're in the same boat, same page, same line. We're synced up. Let me share that information with him. And that's the point that I wanted to go through here on the alignment is the closer that you can match with them, the closer that you can align with them, the better. So I, I thought this would be a fun example. Um, let's pretend for a little bit that the message you're trying to deliver, or what you're trying to deliver and, and help somebody get is just water. Everybody needs it. It's essential to life. The same way that everybody needs or not us, everybody needs water. Now there's different ways to deliver water and it's gonna depend on what their needs are. For some people, like it may be a fire truck is the best method because they've got a fire that they've got to get put out. And it's just like, I need to show you that you've got all of these things. We're gonna fix your problems. Now that we've got the fire truck here, the host go and like, let's start with step one and let's quickly go through all of this. With other people, it's going to be Added, here's a teaspoon of water. I'll keep bringing you a teaspoon of water as long as you need it until you're ready for a cup of water. And then until you're ready for getting your own water and taking care of yourself after you have the education and are started on that path. But with that, there's, there's a, me a number of delivery methods that we could choose. And then the alignment and the rapport, I think it's cool to, with this example, to think about like, what does our body language show? What else do we need to do to get people to trust us with the water? So let's see. If we imagine for a second that somebody that you know, wife, spouse, family member, mother, whoever it is, somebody that you know needs water, needs a drink, and they can't do it for themselves. Kind of a silly example I realized but take something that's crucial to their well-being, which I believe or not a is, how can we deliver it to them in a way that specifically benefits and helps them and in a way that they'll accept it? Now I know from my experience, like if I go and talk to my little sister and I've got a cup of water, like there is no way she is going to trust me to pour the water into her mouth. I've just done that, not that way so many times, pouring it down her neck or, throwing it in her face or whatever it is. Like our relationship, the rapport that we have, she doesn't believe that I'm just gonna pour it nicely into her mouth. Like that, that's not gonna happen. It's gonna be a squirt bottle spraying her in the face with throwing the water on her. For me to overcome that, I'm gonna have to do a few things to make sure that she trusts me with that. It might be that I need to kneel down by her and talk to her side by side without the water close and just say, hey, I know that you really need this. As soon as you're willing, let me show you something that you don't know yet. Let me help you. You can trust me. Like, you know that I have your best intentions at heart. You've done some things silly in the past, but I've got something that is gonna be very, very good for you. Let me help. If it's my mom, it's gonna be something different. I'm gonna come from an area of very, of a lot of respect for her. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna praise her and say, hey, you've done so much for our family. You've sacrificed a lot. You've taken care of all of our needs. I've got something that I know will help you take the next step. Let me sit down beside you and show you this information. And the same thing when we, when we give people that glass of water, we think about the body language that we're going to is the same body language that I use when I talk to my people. So I don't stand face to face with somebody and then try to pour water into them into their mouth. Like imagine that act that out with me. It, it's weird. It's not comfortable. It's hard to tilt your hand far enough to, to pour the water in comfortably for them. I side I stand side by side, my arm around them, put the cup up to their mouth basically with my arm in the same position that I would drink the water and then I give them a little bit of a sip at a time until they've been satisfied with that. If you posture your body that way, if you'll 
make sure that you're aligned with the person that way you're at their level you're not like two feet above their head pouring water on trying to get it into their mouth or two feet below them or left or right like that's not going to work it's not going to align the message isn't going to stick for them because you didn't meet them where they're at and as you line it up, those concepts, the sender, the message, the receiver, do it in a way that builds rapport, that you're aligning yourself with them, that you're their best friend and you guys are going into this together. And then you're helping them become independent as quickly as possible. That's what I found has been the most successful. So again, just reiterating the last part, the three components, the sender, the message and the delivery method, the receiver, and then make sure that you're building that rapport and that alignment with them. I, I hope that's, this was helpful for you guys. The last thing that I wanna add is just that marketing goes both ways. If the only interaction that they ever see is you pouring water at them, eventually like that's not, I don't wanna say it's not enough, but it's not complete, right? Like, if I just sat there and poured and poured and poured and poured and poured and didn't take their responses back like, oh, that's enough or, oh, slow it down or speed it up, there's going to be some frustrations with that process. So the more that you can get them to talk back to you is going to help out. And again, that comes back to asking those questions, figuring out where they're at. It's funny, guys. It's like a lot of us have, and I, I had too, like I'm in the same boat as you guys we had concerns with asking people questions. Oh, they're surely they're not gonna share that with me. And they, they won't as long as you don't ask the question. And it might be that sometimes you, you ask the question in a way that doesn't really align. And what I found is I fear a lot of the time that I'm gonna get this. So like I send out a message that is this binary code, that example, but I send something out that just like doesn't click with them at all. Doesn't, doesn't make sense to them and I'll, I worried for a long time that I was going to ruin those relationships. And there, there are ways to do that. But for the most part, if I mess up on my message or my delivery, let, let me ask you guys, like how many of you are going to remember binary code 10 minutes from now or half an hour or 10 days from now? Like you're going to forget this in 10 seconds, especially if I didn't explain to you what this is, that it says happy holidays. This message doesn't align with you. Your mind is just going to say, not important. It's not that I've burned a bridge, not that I've lost the opportunity. It's just that that message didn't connect with that person at that time. And we're too busy for us to remember and worry about what that message was. So now I have the opportunity to present a different message, show them something else again, until we have all three of those in place that I've aligned myself correctly as the sender. I've got the right message delivered to them. They've received it. And then we started building that rapport and going through that cycle over and over and over again. Hope that this has helped. I'll uh, open it up for questions or turn the time back to Ron. Um, anybody has questions, go ahead and hit us up in that chat group or about that way. Ron, you, you still there? I'm here, Joe. All right. I just stopped sharing my screen. I don't know if I'll give you back control. Okay. Well, I sure appreciate it. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. And again, if if anybody does have questions, like throw them in that chat. I'm glad to answer things that way or talk to you and, and other communication methods that we have.